What is scraping? Scraping is a way of using a hand tool or a handheld power tool to remove really small amounts of metal with each stroke or scrape to make something really flat. Now, if you're like me, I thought milling machines made things really flat. Well, it ends up they don't. There's a whole bunch of things, tool pressure, machine deflection, material deflection, and that's just not what milling machines do when at a really, really flat level. And then I found out about surface grinders. And I thought, well, that's what surface grinders do. Surface grinders go back and forth and make things incredibly flat. Well, they do, but they don't. There's some drawbacks to grinders. It's a complicated machine that the machine itself can have tram error or uh, wear in it, especially as that table moves left to right. You're also holding the workpiece down when you hold it down, like you guys saw in the video we did on making and surface grinding this parallel, you either have a vise or you have a magnetic chuck, and that is inducing stress, and that may twist the part. So that's the beauty of scraping. You can do it in a natural state. So card here to a half an hour video on the Richard King scraping class that we did that walks through a whole bunch of stuff. But this video is not teaching you how to scrape, it's just what is scraping. The beauty of scraping is we use a master. And by master, it's something like this surface plate. I have a problem with my surface plate. I don't know if it's calibrated or good. We need to check on that. Click subscribe because we've got some videos coming on how you can check your surface plate and maybe see just how good it is or if you need to get it lapped in. The beauty of a surface plate is they're granite. They're relatively stable compared to metal and you can get them incredibly flat. And then once we've got that flat, the way we scrape is we take an object and we put bluing compound down on the surface plate and then we simply rub our part. And what's gonna happen is the blue shows you where it's touching and the low spots aren't touching. Now, that's actually an incredibly small, it's a peak in a valley, so you're thinking, John, you just told me this was incredibly flat. Well, it's flat across the mean height of the distance. One of the other problems with using a surface grinder, yes, you get a beautiful finish and it's relatively flat over the whole thing, but just like these two gauge blocks, when they're perfectly flat, they'll actually do what's called ringing. They'll stick together. That's pretty cool, right? Well, that's not good for two surfaces like a dovetail or a gib in a machine that are supposed to contact each other. So what you do with scraping is you scrape for what's called points per inch. So let's say this is one inch by one inch. What you want is approximately 20 points per inch. That's showing nine. Now these points should be bigger such that you've got about 40 to 50% of the area covered by highs. How do you get those points? Again, it's a simple hand tool. The hand tool takes a really long time. The Biax power scrapers make quick work of it. And that's the beauty of this. You make a pass, you blew it up, you see where your high spots are. You either dive bomb or hit those individual high spots as you start to get the part flattened out. Once you get it flattened out, you keep scraping till you get the right amount of points per square inch. Again, why is scraping great? You can't always put a whole part of a machine onto a surface grinder, even if surface grinding were the right technique. Why? They could be, it can be huge. You may not be able to afford or get to a surface grinder that big. With a simple hand tool like this or the powered version, you can scrape any machine. Yeah, it'll take you a while. There's also something called flaking. I used to think flaking was scraping. Flaking is something you do after scraping to create deeper pockets for oil to, to not only sit in, but to create a little channel for it to slowly work its way through, basically keeping the oil there. Flaking might be a thousandth to two thousandths deep. This scrape marks, believe it or not, are only two to five ten thousandths of an inch deep. Don't believe me? Let's take a look. This is a 10 thousandth of an inch indicator. That's really sensitive. To prove that, I have a piece of shim sock that's 1.5 thousandths thick. That's about one third the thickness of a piece of printer paper. I'm gonna go ahead and preload this indicator. I'm gonna take this piece of shim stock and just gently slide it in here. And it's gonna bounce around a little because I'm, I'm moving it and wobbling it, but you can see just how sensitive this needle is. You can also see what hopefully a blue spot. That means that's a high spot. So let's go over that blue spot. We've got our indicator on zero. Now watch, this is amazing. I'm gonna move off the blue spot. Look, half a thousandth, maybe five, six cents. That is awesome, that is crazy to me. So let's prove just how flat this parallel is. We can just run this indicator across it because you're gonna bounce through the peaks and valleys. Let's lift it up and let's use a gauge block and that'll show the median heights because that's what I care about. 
So we'll go over here to the side, preload her to zero, come off, come back on, we're at zero. Let's move to the middle, let's come onto the block. I'm getting about a tenth and a half there. Amazing. And let's go to the end. Uh, just a hair over one ten thousandth of an inch. That is crazy. Across 24 inches, we're getting reading one ten to two ten thousandths of an inch of deviation in both flatness and parallelism. So why should you care about scraping? Well, first of all, it's just awesome. It's like the science and the core behind how we got so good at building machines. So many things are scraped. Tormach machines have scraped ways. So much more to this that's so cool. Are you ever gonna use scraping? I found this stair at level in a toolbox that I bought at an auction and I took it down there and sure enough, it was not perfectly flat. And by the way, take a look at this. This was the surface ground parallel that I blued up. Now, the fact that surface grinding makes it so flat, it's actually tricky to blue it because of the stiction. So it may not be a perfect reading, but it also just goes to show you, surface grinders as they travel may not be as perfect as scraping, crazy. So I scraped in my little stare it level. Super fun project. This is easy to do with a hand scraper. If you want to learn more, there's a link in the video description to the DVD that Richard King puts out. That's the class that I just took. And again, link in the video description to a 30 minute video down at Keith Rucker's shop on scraping. Such a cool thing, more to come. Uh, click subscribe if you enjoy. Otherwise, take care folks. See you soon.